Hello everyone. In this session of CCNA series, I'll discuss about IPv6 basics and features. IPv6 or Internet Protocol version 6 is the most recent version of the Internet Protocol developed by the Internet Engineering Task Force or IETF. It is the next generation Internet Protocol standard intended to eventually replace IPv4 which is running out of addresses and the protocol many internet services still use today. IPv6 is a 128-bit address. Why IPv6 or why do we need IPv6? IPv4 was designed in the early 80s and did not get any major change afterward. At the time of its infancy, internet was limited only to few universities for their research projects and to Department of Defense. The Internet Engineering Task Force designed the old IPv4 in 1981 to allow about 4.3 billion addresses, which seemed a lot at that time. Today, today the number of connected devices in the world far outstrips the available IPv4 addresses. So internet and mobile access now depends on expensive stopgap measures. But as the internet exploded in size and importance, the IETF realized this address limit was looming disaster and designed IPv6. IPv6 increases the limit to a gigantic 340 undecillion billion addresses, which is equal to 3.4 into 10 raised to 38 addresses. Most global networks are already IPv6 capable, but many smaller enterprises and users still need to catch up in order to benefit from IPv6. Let's see how we can represent the IPv6 address. IPv6 addresses are 128 bits in length and uses a convenient hexadecimal or hex format for addresses. In case if you are not aware what hex values are, this table can help you. 0 to 9 decimal will be represented as 0 to 9 in hex values and from 10 to 15 in decimal will be represented as A to F. As described in RFC 4291, the preferred format of IPv6 is 8x separated by colons. Each x is a 16-bit section that can be represented using up to 4 hexadecimal digits with the section separated by colons. To make it more readable, IPv6 uses a format with 8 sets of 4 hex digits with each set of 4 digits separated by a colon for a total of 32 hexadecimal values. Next, let's see how we can abbreviate the IPv6 addresses. IPv6 addresses are quite long. Imagine you have, a, you have to call a friend and ask him or her to ping the following addresses. It won't be easy, right? To make our lives a bit better, IPv6 addresses can be shortened. You need to just follow the three rules. Rule number one, omit leading zeros. Rule number two, omit all zeros hexdets. Rule number three, four consecutive zeros can be replaced by a single zero. Let us use the above address and apply the rules. First, leading zeros can be removed. After removing the leading zeros, apply the second rule. That is, an entire string of zeros can be removed and replaced by a double colon. You can do it only once. Then you can apply rule number three, where four consecutive zeros can be replaced by a single zero. Let's, let's take a look at some of the examples, where I'll show you the original IPv6 and followed by short abbreviated IPv6 addresses. The consecutive zeros are removed 
here the consecutive removes, re, uh, zeros are removed as well next let's look at the IPv6 features starting with larger address space in contrast to IPv4 IPv6 uses four times more bits to address a device on the internet this much of extra bits can provide approximately 3.4 into 10 raised to 38 different combination of addresses this address can accumulate the aggressive requirement of address allotment for almost everything in this world according to an estimate 1564 addresses can be allocated to every square meter of this earth the next feature we have is simplified header IPv6 header has been simplified by moving all unnecessary information and options which are present in IPv4 header the next feature we have is end-to-end -end connectivity every system now has unique IP address and can traverse through the internet without using network address translation or other translating components after IPv6 is fully implemented every host can directly reach other host on the internet with some limitation such as firewall and organization policies etc the next feature we have is auto configuration IPv6 supports both stateful and stateless auto configuration mode of its host devices this way absence of DSCP server does not put a halt on intersegment communication the next feature we have is uh, faster forwarding or routing simplified header simplified header puts all unnecessary information at the end of the header the information contained in the first part of the header is adequate for a router to take routing decisions thus making the routing decision as quickly as looking at the mandatory header the next feature we have is IPsec initially it was decided that IP must, IPv6 must have IPv, IPsec security making it more secure than IPv4 this feature has now been made optional <coughs> Another feature we have is no broadcast. IPv6 does not have any broadcast support anymore. It uses multicast to communicate with multiple hosts. Another important feature is anycast support. This is another characteristic of IPv6. IPv6 has introduced anycast mode of packet routing. In this mode, multiple interfaces over the internet are assigning same anycast IP address routers while routing send the packet to the nearest destination another feature we have is mobility IPv6 was designed keeping mobility in mind this, features, this feature helps and this feature enables host such as mobile phone to roam around in the different geographical area and remain connected with the same IP address the mobility feature of IPv6 takes advantage of auto IP configuration and extension header Then another feature we have is enhanced priority support. IPv4 uses 6 bits DSCP and 2 bits ECN to provide quality of service but it could only be used if the end-to-end -end devices supports it that is the source and the destination device and underlying network must support it. In IPv6 traffic class and flow labels are used to tell the underlying routers how to efficiently process the packet and route it. Another feature we have is smooth transition. Large IP addresses address scheme in IPv6 enable to allocate devices with globally unique IP addresses. This mechanism saves IP address and NAT is not required so devices can send or receive data among each other for example VoIP and or any streaming media can be used much efficiently. Other fact is the header is less loaded so router can take forwarding decision and forward them as quickly as they arrive and the last feature we have is extensibility one of the major advantages of IPv6 header is that it is extensible to add more information in the option part IPv6 are placed in separate extension headers that are located between the IPv6 header and the transport layer header in a packet IPv4 provides only 40 bytes for option whereas options in IPv6 can be as much as the size of the IPv6 packet itself 
that's it for this session thank you for watching please do like share and subscribe thank you